my 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 head. And I'm a, I'm a baby, so give me a second. It was very high for me. Um, so Ray and Scarlett currently live in Olympia, um, Washington. They're part of the South Sound Church of Christ. Mm -hmm. um, they lead a Bible talk there, and they are helping with the teens as well. Yes. yes. Um, so uh, they are originally from San Diego. Um, so you guys might know some of their people. You're from San Diego too, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So you guys might know some of the people. Um, then they moved to um, the LA Church. And that's when April and I got to know them. Mm -hmm. So they were in our last Bible talk um, that I spoke about in the past um, yes. before we moved here. How it, it just got very deep and it functioned well and um, all that kind of stuff. So um, they came over. Um, they just wanted to share God's word and also see what Dry Cities looks like. <laughs> so thankfully it's like <laughs> the perfect weekend weather-wise. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm appreciative of you guys. Thank you for taking the four hour, whatever it is, trek over yeah. here and yeah. Um, yeah. look forward to hearing what you have to say. Um, some of this is um, uh, based off personality tests that we took. So if you saw the, the link on the WhatsApp, if you had a chance to do it. If not, you won't be completely lost, but just so you know what he's talking about. So, yeah. um, all right, I give you guys Ray. Thanks, Ray. Right. Right. Thank hey, you. welcome, Ray. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, April. Thank you guys for having us today. We were, we're really honored to be here. Uh, we really were excited to just come share with you. And, um, you know, life's been a big journey for me and my wife. Uh, we've been through a lot of life, even though we look real young without a lot of life. Uh, we're, we're, I'm, I'm 40 years old. I may not look that, but I'm, I'm trying to stay young. Um, so I was born in San Diego, California, like Jim said. In 1983, I was born. Uh, I was the fourth child in the family, uh, born to with six other, uh, with six of us in total, uh, born to my mom. Uh, I was the first of two sons born to my father. Um, uh, so most of my siblings were half siblings. Uh, mo uh, both of my parents were popular kids in high school, and uh, my siblings' fathers are very similar in that regard. Very popular guys, like good looking guys, cool, all that kind of stuff, but not so, well, maybe cool on the outside, but not so cool on the inside, right? And uh, so uh, most of those men um, and my mother were, were influenced by drugs and bad parenting, and uh, that's kind of like how, what we were exposed to very young, and there was a lot of family trauma. Um, my mom ended up uh, raising all of us single-handedly, um, quickly after those relationships uh, dissolved, and uh, our fathers would only come to see us on rare occasions. Mm -hmm. um, so at 11, uh, I went to live with my father, and my mom actually had to do jail time. I didn't find that out until later on in life, uh, a couple years ago, actually. And uh, I went from being a, in a house full of kids to being uh, with the father alone. And, uh, and, and I was well aware that he really didn't want me there and uh, it made it interesting nonetheless, none the least. So um, I grew up in this, um, in my teen years in a neglected, uh, abusive household. And uh, at the age of 16, thank God I was, I was actually met by someone in our church who knew my sister from complete opposite side of the city. Um, it'd be the equivalent of uh, Olympia versus Seattle or something like that, kind of really far away. And she was going to a Bible talk with my sister. And um, she knew me and she asked me to come out. And I ended up coming out, studying. And uh, long story short, I uh, ended up getting baptized eventually and saved my life, Amen. literally. Um, I was headed downhill quickly. Yeah. Um, and during that time, uh, you know, you, you, there's so much excitement about changing your life and getting saved by God, getting saved by Jesus and the, the life that he gave so we can live a life. And, um, and all of us have a, a story of some sort where we had to leave our past behind. We had to leave, away, leave behind the pains or the struggle, the things that we suffered through and the things that we've been afflicted by in our heart and in our soul so we could live a new life. Uh, and uh, Jesus laid down his life for us. Uh, these were 
Those are exciting times that we remember in our story, right? Our timeline as disciples is like, it's such an exciting time mm -hmm. to think about transitioning from a world of hurt to transitioning into a world of, of opportunity, mm -hmm. a chance to, uh, to live a new life and be excited spiritually about, about that moment, that transition, that forgiveness. And uh, it's a roller coaster. And it's such a high, it's such a pinnacle. It's, it's, it's the pinnacle of, of our life. It's the greatest moment in our life. And uh, what happens after that, though, is we start, to, we start to transition out of that high. Mm -hmm. And then things slowly start to maybe decline, right? <laughs> and you're like going, you know, you're like a couple years out. And then five, ten years out, you start to wonder, how, how did I go from way up there? To where I am now, and it's it's really interesting, and it, and there's a there's there's a I think there's a reason for that, and um, it's an, an amazing opportunity that we have to know Christ, and uh, in First John chapter three verse sixteen it says, "This is how we know what love is: Jesus Christ laid down His life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters." Uh, then another scripture in John 15, verse 9, uh, Jesus is talking to the disciples and he says, uh, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep in my love, I have told you, uh, if you keep in my love, or keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that you... Uh, my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Mm -hmm. Complete joy, right? Yeah. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Mm -hmm. Greater love has no one than this. Mm -hmm. to, date, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Mm -hmm. You are my friends. If you do what I command. Do you command your friends to do stuff? I no longer <laughs> call you... He says, I no longer call you servants. Because a servant does not know what his master's business is. Mm -hmm. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. He's mm -hmm. told you everything. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the father will give you. Mm -hmm. This is my command, love each other. And this is a this is so hard. Yeah. This is so hard. You know, like we got in that middle middle of that uh, that scripture. Is, it says, you know, I, I friends friends know their their each other's business, but they don't know their master's yeah. business. Mm -hmm. You don't know your boss's business. He doesn't yeah. tell you that stuff because he's not your friend. Yeah. You know, yeah. but your friends they should know your business mm -hmm. and their sacrifices that come with that yeah. vulnerability. Time, energy, you know, all these types of things. Um, and, and when you let go and you give everything like Jesus gave to us, you complete your friendship. You complete your joy. You complete your love. And um, when, you're, when we're disciples, uh, when you first become a disciple, there's still a lot of work to be done. Yeah. Still a lot of work. I'm still working on myself. Yep. I don't know about you guys. So I just, I'm still working on myself. I thought I was done. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So the, the excitement of being filled with love and grace is so pivotal. So much so that we stop loving selfishness and follow God first. Mm -hmm. Right? So important. That's a, such an important first step. We follow, we follow the scripture. The first and greatest commandment. It says in, uh, in Matthew 22, verse 34 to 37, it says, Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together, and one of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Heart, uh, soul, <laughs> and mind, right? Um, there's another version of this in Luke. It says, uh, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mm -hmm. your soul, your strength, and mind. Mm -hmm. Okay? And we'll go into that. He says, this is the first and greatest commandment. Okay? The 
first and greatest commandment. Let's make a pyramid here. Alright? First and greatest commandment. That mark is not very bright. Okay. Let's do it. Got a different one. Boom. Okay, got it. He says the second command is like the first. He says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Second. And so he says it's like it. What does that mean? Well, he says some details about it. He says that, number one, uh, it's important, right? He says that this is the first and greatest commandment. And he says this is like this. Mm -hmm. okay. And then the next part he says is that, um, that loving yourself is like loving your neighbor. All right? It's very interesting because most of us have heard this many times, and and uh, but there's details to this, right, that are are critical here. So it says, um, "Love your neighbors as you love yourself," and uh, make sure that you have you do it with your heart, your mind, your soul, and strength. Right? These four things. All right. So you want to be doing that. Not just to God, like it said in the first part, but it says, make sure you do this like you do this. Right? Heart, mind, soul, strength. How do you do that? Well, on Friday, we, we did some, we covered some details and we talked about uh, what, what makes us up as individuals. Mm -hmm. You know, what makes the person that we are. Right? Go a little stick figure. Speak more right here. <laughs> Me. <laughs> So you got your mind, um, you got your heart, or is it heart's here, right? Heart, <laughs> soul, let's say like, this is your aura, whatever you want to call it. If you look at Webster's Dictionary of a, of a soul, it says that your soul is the, the, um, the in, uh, the non-physical form of who you are, the essence of yourself that is an embodiment of who you are. And so, um, so that's, that's who you are, right? And then you have your, your mind, your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. What's your strength? Your strength is kind of like, you know, this guy right here. Give him a little muscle. Can we get one? He's got, he got a little bit of strength. He just became a disciple, so. Uh, but he's got, uh, you know, strength is like energy. You know, it's like lightning bolt, right? I don't know. I'm not an artiste so that much, but lightning bolt, right? Call it energy uh, or strength, right? So, uh, so we'll talk. We'll talk about the first part that that we basically that will embody these four components, right? Heart, mind, soul, strength. Uh, one of the things we talked about is love languages super important part about knowing how to use our heart how do you how do you love someone so in proverbs it says four, in chapter 4 verse 23 it says above all else guard your heart for it for everything you do flows from it super important matthew chapter 5 verse 8 says blessed are the pure in heart clean heart for they will see god it's super important to think about matters of the heart says, but what does it mean to love God first effectively? All right, that's what I wrote, right? So uh, you have to think about that. Is there such a thing as loving God ineffectively? Well, your spouse can probably tell you whether you're effectively loving her or not. Or your friend can probably tell you whether you're really being a great friend or not, right? And so I would say that if there's a possible way to love your spouse ineffectively, there's probably a way you can ineffectively be loving God yeah, as well. That's true. Whether it's by intention or lack of diligence, mm -hmm. you know. And um, so it's super important to think about this stuff. I think sometimes we go through and we, we kind of float through and we, 
want to like think that okay well i'm good you know like i'm yeah i feel comfortable so god must be comfortable too <laughs> but that doesn't usually work in friendships you know uh, making sure that you're comfortable doesn't really make your friend comfortable. Right. Um, so, uh, you know, every, every one of us kind of has a story, you know, or has a friend that we can think of that, or a situation where someone gave something to us. Let's think of Christmas, right? Okay. Have you ever gotten a gift you got that you didn't really want? Socks. Yeah, some socks, man. Socks, right? What's up with them socks? Yeah, so we, we've all got the socks. Some people love the socks, some people hate the socks, you know? Some people want the Red Rider BB gun and they didn't get it, you know? Like, it doesn't, doesn't happen, you know? So, uh, but we can all relate to that. It's like getting a gift we didn't necessarily want. And so we got to start thinking about that. How do we give what people want? How do we love people the way they want to be loved? Uh, it's a combination of things. If you look at the scripture... In here, in the greatest commandment, it says, um, "Love your neighbor as you, uh, as yourself." You could take that two ways. It could be the way that you want to be loved, and it could also be the way that your neighbor, uh, loving your neighbor as, uh, since your neighbor would expect to be loved the way they they feel most embraced and loved. They would expect you to love them with that type of love. So it can be trans, uh, translated in both ways. You can, you can translate that with both meanings. And I think it probably means both. I think it probably means both. Your children may not have the capacity to have high level love, right? But they have the ability to do their best. When they draw, when they draw you drawings and they're not masterpieces, you know they're not, you know, what you put in the the, you know, uh, Smithsonian or something like that. You still feel loved, you know. You still feel loved because they gave their best, and um, and it's important to do our best, but to continue drawing our best. Um, so let's go to math in Matthew chapter seven, verse nine through ten. It says. Um, which of you, which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? Super important. So, uh, so let's talk about that, right? So these are, these are, those are matters of the heart that we can all relate to. Now, the next thing that we talk about besides heart, love languages... Uh, who knows some of the love languages? Scarlett. Oh, you want me to name them? Just one, if you want. Uh, quality time. Uh, physical contact. Acts of service. Acts of service. Acts of service, okay. Gavin. Well, it says affirmation. Good job. Boom, there you go. Okay, perfect. And then uh, quality time is the last one. I said that one. Oh, you said quality time, sorry. <laughs> See? Yeah. See, I'm not loving her. Oh, I'm not loving her the way oh. she wants to. Be. <laughs> gifts. Gifts. There you go. Gifts. 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 That's definitely one of them. Okay. So there's these five different ways that people can be loved, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's important to be in touch with those things yeah. and to be able to communicate to people to know what their love languages are, so you can speak to them, so you can give them the love that they expect. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you? How, but how do you talk to God? How do you talk to God and love Him? And hit, what's God's love language? Well, that's tough, right? Uh, it's kind of hard to ask him face to face. I'd say probably he income, he's, he's in all and through all, right? Mm -hmm. He probably accepts any of them. Mm -hmm. But what's important in our attempts to love God is that we have to understand that he's very situational. I think this is the most important thing I would, I'm going to talk about the God, the God part of this. Mm -hmm. Most of this conversation is here. We're going to talk mostly about this because I think we need a lot of work there. But up here, there's many scriptures in the Bible that talk about how God um, chose to harden Pharaoh's heart, right? He made a decision and he gave uh, maybe after some bad decision making or, uh, you know, after him being so hard headed, he eventually said, you know what, buddy, you're, you're you know, we've got a plan for you. This is how we're going to use you. And, um, 
And so some might call that destiny. But then you have other uh, uh, stories in the Bible where God gives us choice. He gives us choice. And he says, you know, you know, choose. Choose, uh, you know, to lay your life down. Choose to follow me. And he gives people the opportunity to choose. And they make that, they make that choice to follow him, to drop everything they had and, and go and follow him. And uh, so God operates not just in one or two dimensions. It's, it's, more, it's even more than that. It's not just, it's, it's three, four, five, you know, infinite dimensions because he's God. And um, he gets to choose when he wants to do it because he's God. And it's really interesting, too. Think about love of your friend or your family member. Have you ever gone to the drive thru and you're like, oh, I know what you want to order. I'm going to order you. I'll order for you. And they're like, no, like I, I actually don't, you know, I want to, I want to get the, the triple bacon burger today, you know, and they change their mind. That's not usually the routine, but today they want something different. You still have the ability to choose different love, just as God has the, the freedom to choose different things as well. And it's hard to understand that. It's hard, like, because we like consistency. Mm -hmm. We like consistency. But that's not always going to be the case, uh, that it's, things are going to be consistent. So we have to be open. Mm -hmm. We have to be open. Uh, so let's talk about learning style now. So we know God is infinite. We know that he can change course at any point in time and we have to accept and, and be okay with that be open to that and the same the same is true if if this is like this that means the same is true here yeah. we may choose the double bacon cheeseburger or your neighbor may choose the double bacon cheeseburger as well you know you may change your mind and not have the same expectations of what love is and it may evolve as you get better mm -hmm. and you need to communicate to someone eventually that, uh, you know, like, what, I, what moves my soul now is different from when I was young. Now I've matured. But we're born with something. We're born with something. And, uh, and it's called uh, personality type. Personality type, we're born with. And some may attribute it to, maybe it's the soul. Maybe it's this. Maybe it's your DNA, Jim made a good point. Maybe it's in your DNA. I don't, I don't know, I can't prove that. You know, I don't know the answer to that question. It's possible, it's possible. I'm sure there's scientists out there, I don't know. Maybe Pejuan, you know? I know the scientist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it genetic? It's still born in theory. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like a little psychopath, like is yeah. it actually born? Or is it, right. you know, like, right? Yeah, yeah. Or, it's, or is it, you know, like environmental? It's, right. You really believe it's the work of you know, tech, right? Um, but the which plays more important role, like more people, people more people more believe like the environment, like yep. how you grew up, your upbringing may play a more important yeah. role in your you know predispositions. Yeah. And I call I call that life experience. We'll get into that one. But I think it's it's it has to be a little back because yeah. trauma changes personality. Oh yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. Physical totally. trauma too. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So there's lots of factors here, right? But there's something you're born with. And I'll give an example. So in, um, in the story of Jacob and Esau, um, you see, it says the babies, the babies jostled together. It says within, within her, within the mother, and said, why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire to the Lord. The Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb, and two peoples from within you you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other. And the older will serve the younger. When the, time, uh, when the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. The first came to come out was red, and his whole body was, like, was hairy like a garment. So they named him Esau. After this, his brother came out with his hand grasping Esau by the hill. So he was named Jacob. Isaac, saw this, saw, uh, Isaac was six years old when uh, Rebecca came uh, gave birth to them the boys grew up and Esau became a skillful hunter a man of the open country while Jacob was content to stay home among the tents Isaac had 
who had a taste for wild game, loved Esau, but Rebekah loved Jacob. So very different personalities, but this was like this happened in the womb. Those of you who have children know when you have your kids as they in their developmental stage, you're like, where did they get that from? That's not from me. <laughs> you're like, that, maybe some of that, but not all of it, you know? And some of it, like, you might look at both of each other and be totally confused. Like, is that any of us? You know, it's like interesting chem- chemistry going on there. <laughs> but they got that from, from birth. Like, God gave that to them be- while they were being formed. It's nothing out here that did that to them. It's nothing out here. It's something inside. And so, um, so it's really interesting. Um, you guys all have a personality type that you were born with. You have to understand that. It's so important to understand what that personality type is. If you haven't taken the personality test, I highly recommend you do it. Because it teaches you two really important things. What are your strengths? And what are your weaknesses? What are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? Just like Jacob and Esau, they also had their strengths and weaknesses. Uh, another thing to think about is some of us are feelers and some of us are thinkers. And I think the genetic distribution will show that there's more feelers in the world than there are thinkers. So when you see people on the news doing crazy things, sometimes you're like, why don't they just think about it? <laughs> we have that problem. We see, we see the non-thinkers and we go... What are they doing? It's crazy. So, but we have to be compassionate. And so you hear constantly in the Bible, you hear Jesus talking about matters of the heart. Why does he do that so much? He talks about it more than like, hey, you got to think about this right. You know, you got to think, you know, you got to use this logic where he talks about more about matters of the heart than, than the thinking part of it. Because most people operate from here, genetic on a genetic distribution. How do we know that? Well, you can just look by the number of leaders in the world. There's more. There's a lot less leaders than there are followers, and usually the the leaders will tend to be um, less less on the the feeling part. A lot of times they're associated with sociopaths because they can yeah. make hard decisions and tell people what to do without having any feeling about the repercussions. And um, so it's something to understand. But let's look at. Um, why it's important to have um, a focus on the heart. So it says, uh, uh, the rich young ruler, we'll talk about that scripture, it says, uh, just then a man came up to Jesus and asked, teacher, what good thing must I do to have eternal life? Why do, I, why, uh, why do you ask me what is good? Jesus says, right off the jump, he says, dude, why are you worried about logic? <laughs> and that's what he's saying to him. He says, why do you worry about what is good, what is not? Like, why are you worrying about categories? I'm teaching you guys categories right here. Mm-hmm. Jesus replied, "There is only one who is good. If you want, if you want to enter life, keep the commandments. Which ones?" He inquired. Again, he wants. He wants. He wants information. Uh, Jesus replied, "You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother. Love." Your neighbor as yourself. Hmm. That scripture sounds familiar. Uh, as all these I have kept. Oh, he said, all these I have kept. The young man said, he just got them all checked off his checklist. He says, what do I still lack? Jesus answered, if you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. He basically, basically was checking his heart. Uh, when the young man heard this, he went away sad because he had great wealth and a great big checklist, right? <laughs> and so uh, God was calling out his heart. We're going to go into the next part. We're going to talk about learning style. Right? We talked about personality type. Personality type deals with uh, your soul. What you're born with, your essence of who you were before you were a full human being. I think that's part of your soul. And then we're going to talk about, and we talked about love languages, which is your heart. All right. And then we're going to talk about uh, your character. Or I'm sorry, learning style. 
So learning style. In Genesis 15, verse 5, he took him aside and said, look up at the sky. He's talking to Abraham. And count the stars. If indeed you can count them, then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. He wanted him to do what? Look, he uses, uses learning style. He was a, he was a visual. He, he maybe knew he, Abraham needed a visual depiction so he could get vision and see things. What's another example of learning style in the Bible? David. David wrote the Psalms. He was a musician. He was likely, he was likely an auditory learner. It's very likely. Uh, so it's important to observe these things. How do you love with your mind? You know? How do you love with your mind? Alright, so let's go on to um, let's go on to character. Character is what you choose. Character is what you choose. What does that mean? Well, you know, you, we've all seen movies. Sometimes there's good characters. Sometimes there's bad characters. And you can choose which character you are. Uh, in your life, you get to choose what character you are. And you'll get faced with situations. And your character... Your character... Okay. Will equate to your to the energy. What you choose is this energy right here, right? The strength. This little muscle right here. It's, it's strength, right? You choose. It, you don't have to be uh, super, uh, you know, intelligent. You don't have to have too much heart. You just need to choose, right? Uh, God used many pe examples of people that had character, but they had zero strength. Zero ability to speak. Zero courage. <laughs> you know? But they but they had they made a choice. They had character, you know? This energy. And they went and did it. So it says in Galatians 5:13, it says, Life by the Spirit. It says, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge in the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. Yeah. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh de uh, desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. Yeah. They are in conflict, conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. It says the acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, and witch, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I, want you, uh, I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ, uh, Jesus, have crucified the flesh and its passions and its desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. Ooh, that's heavy. a lot love your neighbor as you love yourself you know in life we, we have um, we have this thing that's not up here yet it's called life experience this has to do with you and your choices right outside here let's just make a little I don't know thing right <laughs> <laughs> What's that? <laughs> right? Bad guy? So, um, yeah. maybe sad guy? I don't know. He's probably a little bit both. Uh, but you guys, uh, you know, you got things attacking you all the yeah. time. Mm -hmm. Right? These are external factors. Yep. And, uh, and those external factors, they can affect 
and influence how you use your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. And we have to be very mindful of that. It influences those things. And it can even deceive us to make us believe what we were born with is not really who we are. It can make us think that it can lie to us and tell us, like, oh, we're not loved. Mm -hmm. It can tell us, oh, you're not strong. Oh, you're stupid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, you don't have strength for that. Mm -hmm. And if we're not in our word, and if we're not following um, what God is calling us to do, especially this, loving him by obeying his word and loving our neighbors, you're going to be such an easy victim of this guy. Um, so it's super important. That's why this is the greatest command. That's why this is the greatest command. So I'm going to close it uh, with one more scripture in Romans chapter 12. If you guys want to go there with me. Romans 12. Verse 1. says a living sacrifice it says therefore I urge you brothers and sisters in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as living sacrifice holy and pleasing to God this is your true and proper worship do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by renewing your mind then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is his good pleasing and perfect will humble service in the body of Christ says for the by the grace given me I say to every one of you do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We all have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, then do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Love in action. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal. But keep your spirit fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of the law of low position. Do not be conceited. It says, do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not overcome evil by um, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. I want to leave you guys with three practicals. Okay. Um, so you'll have to write this down on your phones or something, or your notepad or your iPad, whatever you got. So here's the three practicals. Um, page one gave one. He said, Re "Reflect on the Gospels again." You guys should be reading the, Read through the gospel I really want you guys to read that uh, Scripture says faith Faith comes from hearing the message And the message is heard about hearing the word of Christ yeah. You hear those words in, in the gospel yeah. It'll build your faith And it'll teach you uh, to love God first mm -hmm. Just like Jesus did okay. The second uh, Practical Learn who you are Take these tests. Take your Meyer Briggs test. Take your learning style test. And then figure out what your love language is. Mm -hmm. 
there's a there's a book called the love the five love languages you can read that or you can take a quick test online uh, but do those things so you learn about yourself and, and ask questions you can google all these things like uh, what do I do as a I'm an ENTP so I can write down a question um, I can write down certain questions about my personal personality type I'll give you guys an example in just a second here um, third practical Third practical. Communicate what you need with words. <laughs> specifically <laughs> to your friends and your family. To your spouse, to your neighbors. This week. <laughs> this week. You got seven days. <laughs> seven days, all right? So I'm going to give you an example. If I were to have not done this and I needed to do it, I would do the tests and then I would have, uh, you know, do my reading, have my quiet times, but I would come up with a list like this. And I'll send this to Jim and April so they could send it to you guys uh, as an example. It says, I am an ENTP. My strength is that I can come up with many ideas and inspire vision. My weakness is that sometimes I take on too many tasks at once because I have so many ideas. So I have my strengths and weaknesses, right? My learning style is auditory, so I do best by hearing things, and also in a nice tone helps. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my, my love language is acts of service, so it fills up my love tank. When people take time to find out what my priorities are or biggest needs are, and do something helpful to support me in those priorities. Wow. Even if I act, like I might have it all under control. I just, I'm just used to doing things solo by myself. Um, and lastly, my secondary love language is physical touch. So I love hugs and closeness with friends and family. So I got my personality type. I got and got my strengths and weaknesses from there. I got my love language and how that looks. And then um, my secondary love language and learning style uh, is auditory, so I have I have all those things in there. You guys need to share that with each other. Yeah. We took uh, with our group. We took um, note of all those things and had everybody accomplish finish the test, so we can um, we can communicate more effectively and be more connected and, yeah. and empathetic and like more loving. We would know how to do this better, you know. And uh, it helps. It helps. It makes us more complete as a body because I may be the foot. Scarlet may be the, the muscle, and then, you know, Jim's the, Jim's the head of, of the, the body of the church, right? And we make up as a collective, we're all these different body parts, and uh, we have to remember that. If we want to be complete, we need to know what function we serve in the bigger body. So um, so let's pray real quick. God, um, God, thank you so much for this time to be together. God, I'm so grateful to be able to just uh, share with the body, God. I know that... Um, God, I know sometimes we have vision of what we expect the body to look like, God, but God, you, you have a definition that's greater than ours. Amen. God, and I pray that we see with your eyes, God, what it is you call us to do and that we would really listen to our hearts and who you call us to be, God, to, to be our, our full selves, God, in all circumstances, God, to love you first, God, to love our neighbor as ourself, God, but to do it with our heart, mind, soul, and strength. God, I pray that you bless everybody here, and God, you give them vision, God, to use our eyes and ears and our mouth and all of our senses, God, to, to express, God, what it is that we, we need to express to one another. God, I pray that we would use our learning styles, God, to be able to absorb and, and really teach one another and, uh, and be mindful of the things that need to be communicated. God, give us strength. God, give us your love. God, show us what we need God, to be better and to love you effectively. God, we love you. Pray this in your son's name. Amen. 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 All right, let's take a break.